Welcome back guys. And I am alive and well. <laughs> we are out at my family's property and we are finally doing the cold weather survival over, not, overnighter using the survival shelter I have set up with this survival cold weather rig that I have. And with that said, this is probably my last hee haw for winter camping because winter's pretty much done with after this weekend, I think. So the high today is like 44, 45, and the low is 23 degrees or 20, or no, 24 degrees uh, Fahrenheit tonight. So yeah, it's gonna be a little chilly tonight. Nothing too drastic, but if I don't do it now, we won't get this one in. So I hope you guys are doing great. And uh, we never had to hike very far. Just park and hike about uh, 200 yards. <laughs> So yeah, it's not like a real survival situation, but we are, we got a pretty nice timber out here. It goes way, way, we don't own it, but it goes way out there. But um, there's a little 360 for you. That's a tree stand. We got a hunter hunts out here, but uh, yeah. So, okay. So I'll get right to it. First things first is we're gonna set this shelter up. And um, originally we're gonna do this uh, secret pine forest. That didn't work out. Um, I'll put a link up screen for that video. I was cutting up all the firewood for the shelter system because the type of shelter I have set up with this cold weather survival rig, it requires a lot of wood. And there's a lot of long branches out here, so it's gonna be perfect. But we'll get to that here in a minute. This is where the shelter's gonna go. We have a tree here, tree here. What I'm gonna do is get a ridge line brought up, and the ridge line will probably be at my uh, waist height. So if I'm sitting in it, it's just gonna be a little bit above my head. So, uh, all right, we'll get right to it. And as we make the shelter, we'll talk about it. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys also, this right here has got all my camera stuff in it and my gloves, so. Of course, I got the cold weather survival rig on. Okay, we got our ridge line set up here. Just a simple ridge line. Now I made this ridge line, if you can see here, I made this ridge line, I don't know if you can see it right here, but here on camera here where my hand is. Uh -huh. So I made this ridge line just a little bit above my waist because when I put the uh, tarp on here, it's gonna weight it down. So basically waist height is where I'd want it so I can sit up in it without my head, without having it crunched down. And if you guys remember, I said as I go through this system, I will change things up. And I did a little bit of configuration. So if you guys watch my cold weather survival rig video, you know that I had space blanket, which I still do. But I traded out. This is a Mylar, more of a heavier duty Mylar tarp. Uh, it's a certain brand, I can't think of it at the moment. But I also traded out my uh, poncho liner for a patrol bag. I had room for patrol bag and I had room for this. So what you do, well what I did is I, I made a fisherman's knot to connect this and make a loop. And then what I'll do is I'll bring this around like that. Bring that through the loop. Bring it around here again. Now I think you're supposed to go three times but uh, we'll go four times because I made a loop or the piece kind of big. They did it four times there. I will go one more. Actually, you know what? Yeah, that's four. And then what you do is you get that loop and you put it through the other loop like that. Get that out there like there we go. I think I'm doing this not right. I could be doing it wrong. I don't think I am. No, it works. It doesn't look very pretty, but uh, I'll bring you guys down here and show you what we're going to do here. See how I can move that along the ridge line? Now check this out, when the toggle's in there, it won't move, look at that. So what I can do is when I have that, I can stretch the tarp out where I want it, 
and I don't gotta worry about it moving. Crucix knot, crossix knot. I don't know how to speak proper English, obviously. <laughs> So you guys see what I'm talking about now. Then what I'll do is I'll move it here with my fingers and that will tighten. That will tighten that out just like that. And basically it will take all the slack off. Now it's tight and it can't move now side to side. I had the SP8 on my survival rig because uh, the ground is really frozen still. Even though it's 40 degrees, it is still very frozen. Okay, disclaimer alert, before I go any farther, this is not my own type of super shelter. There's plenty of YouTube videos on this style super shelter, made in different ways, but to give credit where credit is due, I'd be giving credit right now to Morris Kohansky, because this is a Morris Kohansky uh, style shelter. Uh, the, the, the real Morris Kohansky shelter is like this, but it's used over a different type of frame. And that would be in the type of forest that this was more or less invented or innovated, which would be the Boreal Forest. Or we're, not, we're not in the Boreal Forest. So many people make it like this. And this is why I decided to set this up with my cold weather rig. And a lot of people say this shelter system is very warm. So we're gonna find out tonight. So next thing you need is a nine by 12, one mil plastic sheet. This and the Mylar tarp, which is right here, is your main components that you need. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drape this over the shelter. This has turned to an absolute nightmare and I'll show you what's going on. First off, my fir this is my first time doing this. I had the ridge line way too high, so don't listen to me. You want I was right, you want it waist level. Probably even, actually, I probably should have it even lower than that. The reason why is because the sheeting that I have is nine by 12. And as you can see on this side here, I have no, I have no way to close it off. I mean, there is, I don't have much to work with there. This side here, I can tape it off. Back here, all I did was tie this onto the uh, stakes. This is my first one. So I'd say you're gonna, if you wanna set the shelter up a little bit taller like I have it, you're gonna need a bigger uh, plastic sheeting. And that's, so now I know I need something a little bit bigger. Second, I have this whole opening here, so I don't know if that's gonna just, all my hot air is gonna release out of there. I have no idea. And, and, and the reason why I say that is this shelter system right here, what's gonna happen next is what we're gonna do is we're gonna get firewood. And we're gonna have a fire about two steps away from this. And it'll be like a long fire. And basically that heat will radiate from the fire into the plastic, bounce off the mylar tarp from behind and it will heat the inside now granted i need airflow through here but that is quite a bit of airflow that's uh how morse kohansky designed this shelter so there it is the more the morris kohansky style super shelter um it's 
sky survival way, I guess. So I have not, I don't have the end closed off. So I do have some other plastic sheeting. Maybe we'll fix something. But for now, I'm done. Oh, and also for here, they put a stick through here too. I got the stick in there. It's not the straightest, but it works. Okay, next step. Okay, I have a sleeping pad. I had room in my gas mask, my East German gas mask pouch for a sleeping pad. So that worked out great. I could just stuff my uh, plastic with leaves, but we'll be out here for a while doing that. But I had room for this, so got that. And then in this pocket here, I have some plastic sheeting that we will use for the ground uh, cloth. Everything is so muddy out here right now. Okay, there it is, home sweet home. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some firewood cut up. We'll get our fire all set up. Now keep in mind, I need a fire going for about nine hours. So we're literally probably gonna be getting in and out of this thing for every two hours. Um, so I have firewood all around me out here. So we're gonna find some firewood next. I'm not gonna bore you guys with cutting it up. You guys know how I cut wood. <laughs> I cut myself. <laughs> That's how I cut wood. This is becoming quite a bit of a workout. That's what I have piled up so far. Here's where our fire is gonna be. These are a little bit longer than I need to be, but I don't need to cut them, so when they burn off, I can just stack them on here. But uh, I'm gonna finish getting some more uh, wood. <laughs> I got probably another 45 minutes of collecting wood. I'm starting to kind of rethink this idea because this is my whole, this is my first time. This is starting to become quite a bit of work. And if I was in a real serious cold weather situation, I would not want to do this because I'd be sweating so much that, you know, it turns into hypothermia basically and I'm sweating but also it is the temps dropping now it's under 40 I'm sure but it was 44 today I got it got to but it's gonna get down to 24 23 tonight but yeah I mean if it was really cold I had to pace myself but this is a lot of work so I'm rethinking this guys <laughs> we got all the firewood I think that'll get us through the night my mind my mindset's nine hours so <laughs> Okay, with that said, we're gonna do something really fast. We are going to open up this East German gas mask pouch on my cold weather travel rig. And we're gonna take one of these 55 gallon drums, three mil, and we're gonna drape it here on the side to help hold the heat in. See if I can screw this up too. <laughs> I seem to do that. So far, so good. It's tearing straight. <laughs> So here's what I came up with. <laughs> we got this going through the paracord there and we just got a little flap open here so I can basically, I can get in and out just lifting that up. 
so that's no big deal. Then around here, same thing, just through the paracord line, I just got some tape, real tape holding it on. So yep, that's it right there. Looking pretty snazzy. All the firewood in the world. Okay, so with that said guys, what time is it? It is 5, 12, you can see it on there. Um, it gets dark about six o'clock now. And uh, I saw someone over there. There's some guys, uh, a couple guys across that ditch, right? There's a big ravine way down there on the other side of the fence line, which is on our property. There's a couple guys over there earlier, I saw them. And uh, not sure what they were doing. However, they weren't on our property. So with that said, I'm gonna head and hike out of here. Oh, way, way, way down there, about 500 yards or so is uh, my parents' house. So I'm gonna go see them for a little bit and have some dinner. And I'll be back out here later on tonight. It'll probably be closer to eight or so, just because I don't wanna start this too early because I have all this firewood to burn. So uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. And uh, definitely testing our skills out tonight. This is a great, this is gonna be a great uh, overnighter, guys. It's not gonna be the most fun, comfortable overnighter, but so far I'm happy. I've got everything pretty much done. And uh, now, just gotta get the fire going, and we'll be getting the fire going at night. So we're we'll to use the headlamp, and uh, it's gonna be a little different. So this is definitely survival training in the comforts of your own property. <laughs> All right, see you guys in a little bit.